Thanks, Josh. Also ahead, police identify the Rochester man killed while riding his motorcycle down Lake Avenue this week. Plus, a look at the powerful punch Hurricane Lane has sent the Hawaiian Islands. From the team you can trust, this is News 8 at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm Elijah Westbrook. Landslides, powerful outages and flooding is already being reported in Hawaii as Hurricane Lane turns closer. The now Category 2 storm unleashes its fury across Hawaii's Big Island today. The slow-moving storm bringing relentless rain and powerful winds. Residents on all eight islands are asked to be prepared, stay alert and not take this storm lightly, no matter where they live. Please heed the warnings. It's very dangerous uh, to be outside, uh, particularly in areas that we know are flood, uh, have imminent flooding occurring or are getting ready to flood. We're told roughly 300 federal workers are in position on the islands, ready to go at a moment's notice. Meteorologist Josh Nichols is standing by to show us what this storm's path looks like. Josh. Yeah, Elijah, the storm is a remarkable look at here from space, and you can see that the rain bands uh, in association with it are... Uh, slowly moving off to the north. That's really the issue here. Remember, a hurricane is not a point on a map. It's a broad circulation. You can see that there. The wind field is large, and this is a slow moving storm. So these rain bands will continue to lift north uh, towards Honolulu, where there is a hurricane warning in effect. There is a flash flood warning in effect for the Big Island uh, through. Uh, 6.45 a.m. local time, and there are flood watches out for the remainder uh, of the area. So here is uh, the latest on lane, a Category 2 hurricane. Again, even though it has weakened, quote-unquote, the storm is still a force to be reckoned with as it slowly drifts to the north. That's the problem. It's a slow drifter, so the rain bands continue to move ashore. It does make a sharp turn to the left as we head into Saturday, and it continues to weaken as it moves out into the open waters of the Pacific as a tropical storm. So good news, the storm is going to turn away, and it is weakening. will likely be a tropical storm by Saturday. We'll talk more about our weather and what we can expect for the weekend in the eight-day forecast in just a little bit. Elijah? Thanks, Josh. Meanwhile, the Department of Water in Hawaii is asking all residents to conserve water immediately. Customers are asked to limit water use to essential uses only. Officials intend to maintain water services, but the storm is expected to cause unforeseen damages to water system facilities. Radioactive waste has been discovered by construction crews at Niagara Falls State Park. It's called Tenorm, and it contains a potential cancer-causing chemical. However, health officials there say the public doesn't need to be concerned. I think the word radioactive sends, you know, shockwaves. However, in this particular situation, it's a naturally occurring material. You know, we have encountered this, and, uh, you know, we found some at the Park Police Station site. Uh, at Cave of the Winds, we have found a little bit. Uh, I think we were putting in uh, some new walkways or sidewalks, we found some of it. Uh, so anytime we've encountered this in the park, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, not only contained it, but we removed it outright. Work is already underway to remove this latest radioactive material. Crews are loading the waste onto trucks and hauling it to a specialized facility in Ohio. The DEC is assisting. The entire project is expected to take about a week. This just in, Senator John McCain is discontinuing cancer treatment. He was diagnosed with an aggressive form of brain cancer. In a statement, the family said, quote, John has surpassed expectations of his survival, but progress of disease and the exonerable advance of age render their verdict, end quote. And in other news, Rochester police have identified the motorcyclist killed on Lake Avenue this week. Police say 31-year-old Randall Griffin was riding north when he crashed into a minivan that was parked along the curb. He was thrown several feet and pronounced dead at the scene. It's still unclear whether the van was parked illegally or if the motorcyclist was speeding. No charges have been filed. Well, officers responded to Warring Road this morning for reports of a crash. It happened around 8 a.m. Police say the driver of a 2009 Volkswagen was traveling south on Warring Road near Culver Road when a second vehicle pulled out in front of them. No injuries were reported, but both vehicles had to be towed from the scene. 
Well, it's a sad loss at the U of R today. Long-term musician and university leader Paul Burgett has passed away. He arrived at the university's Eastman School of Music in 1964 and became one of Rochester's most prominent and beloved figures. Burgett was just 72 years old. Things got heated at a school board meeting in Rochester last night where community members were able to meet the new distinguished educator. Jamie Aquino was sent in by the state to come up with a plan to improve the district. Many people question how the plans to get that job done when he isn't even from the area or knowledgeable about the matters in the community. Aquino has worked with urban schools before, but that wasn't enough for some at the meeting. Millions of dollars going straight into the pockets and bank accounts of people who, for the most part, do not live in this community. I think it's always good to have some a fresh eyes and a different perspective, because sometimes when you're so embedded in the work, you might not be able to see some of the issues that are impacting the increase in, in, student, in student achievement. Aquino says he's coming up with an action plan and it will be ready for the district in the next 45 days. News 8 is your local election headquarters. We will be airing a debate for one of the most watched races this election season, the Democratic primary for governor of New York. New York's current governor, Andrew Cuomo, will face activist and actress Cynthia Nixon. That debate will air Wednesday, August 29th at 7 p.m. right here on News 8. And speaking of voting, Lyft is planning to do its part to help get out the vote this November. The ride-hailing car service will offer half-price rides to polling stations on Election Day. Lyft will distribute promo codes to riders through a partnership with groups like Vote.org. The Spiegel Community Center in the village of Pittsford has received a facelift. The town of Pittsford, who owns the property, voted last year to renovate the property. The new state-of-the-art facility offers a brand-new lobby, child care area, playground, and a senior center. Pittsford Town Supervisor Bill Smith says the building will combine elements from the past and new modern features. It's also a triumph of historic preservation of a 1916 school building here in the heart of the village. And it keeps a, an, important, an important town resource here at the village that's at the center of our community. We're told the building is more than a century old. The town voted to make renovations to the center back in the fall of 2016. The total project cost nearly $10 million. Students at MCC will soon have unlimited access to all RTS bus routes in Monroe County. It's part of the new UPASS program the two companies launched. The hope is that students will no longer struggle to get back and forth between campus, home, and even work. It works any day and time during the school year. The college president says this was three years in the making. There are over 700 students who live on MCC's campus, and many of them are literally landlocked. They don't have cars. They don't have access to transportation oftenly, often because they are low income. That's what we're talking about, is removing all of those barriers to access. We're told under the new program, students just swipe their student ID to ride for free. It starts on the first day of school. Students with only online classes are not eligible. With the new school year approaching, there's a lot of homework to do to find the right daycare provider. That's why News 8 is putting you first. Experts from the Child Care Council will be in our studio to answer your questions. Child Care Choices, Monday from 5 to 6.30 on News 8. Well, thousands of cans going to breast cancer research have been stolen from the New York State Fairgrounds. They were part of the Lawrence Siegel's Cans for Cancer organization. This is the first year partnering with the fair, but thousands of cans were already stolen from a trailer on the grounds and directly from the pink bins across the fair. I'm here every day, morning till night, working as hard as I can to the point of exhaustion with my volunteers to make sure that we get them out of there and into our trailer to help people battling cancer. The money from the cans is supposed to go to the Upstate Cancer Center, the American Cancer Society, as well as the Carol M. Baldwin Fund. All right, well, play more ahead on News 8 at noon in today's Health Watch, the new screening tool being used to tell patients if they're showing signs of Alzheimer's. Follow News 8 wherever you are on rochesterfirst.com 
and our apps for both news and weather. This is the team you can trust. You're watching News 8.